and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Courtney Futch today, and I love this woman because she is so sparkling and she is like full of life. And I met her in an event that I wasn't expecting to meet anybody at, and I uh, happened to be chatting with her. She knew my husband, and she was in a, she's a Syracuse University alum, and we were at a Syracuse University event. And those things can be deadly boring. And then I look over and there's Courtney and she's just full of life and she turns out to be an entrepreneur. And I wanted to tell you her story because she's an entrepreneur and she's also very young as an entrepreneur. She's in her early 20s and also she works full time. So the the thing I love about her story is she's got a lot going on and she has got a laser focus on what she wants to do. And I want you to hear how she does it. So thank you so much, Courtney, for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so My excited. Pleasure. I'm excited too. Thank you. So yeah. just give us a brief overview on, you know, who you are and what you started and why you started it. Yeah, sure thing. So hi, I am an Atlanta native, actually. So I grew up, I think, very influenced by my mom's cooking. She's always been like, just so instinctual in the kitchen and and my dad as well. So both of my parents have been incredibly instrumental in me kind of pushing toward entrepreneurship. I ended up going to Syracuse for both undergrad and grad. Undergrad, I did communication and rhetorical studies with a minor in information technology design, otherwise known as IDS. Um, And that was where I started to kind of flesh out my original idea, which was Thundercake, which is a bakery that was all e-commerce. I ran that for four years. I started it my freshman year with like $6.14 in, in my <laughs> bank account. It was called Thunder Cakes, right? Yeah. So what mm-hmm. was the concept of Thunder Cakes? Because I really want ah. people to like bring themselves back to the moment. You are an undergrad. Were you living in a dorm? I was. I was in BBB, for those who are familiar with Syracuse campus. It's Brewster <laughs> Boland and, and Brockway or something like that. And yeah, so I, I was a freshman. I, mind you, I'd been baking like my whole life. Like I started when I was like seven or eight really informally, I would make like two things. It was lemon cookies and key lime cake, which is like to date my dad's favorite. And that was it. That was my bandwidth. That's all I had. So I got to high school and, you know, while everybody else had their sports, I'm so not competitive. I was like, I'm going to cook the things. I'm going to take these home net classes. I'm going to learn how to knit. And um, I just, I always kind of knew that that was like more my space. Uh-huh. My mom is really into that and like interior design. So we just spent a lot of time like in the house and, and cooking things. So I got to, I believe it was my sophomore year. I joined the culinary team. By my junior year, I was captain and we were like competing. And it was just, it was so much fun for me. But I've kind of put baking on the back burner. No pun um, intended. Up until, <laughs> uh, um, up until like my senior year when I needed to, I wanted to like have money of my own. But I was also much, I was like two grades, two years behind all of the students in my grade. So like I, so my birthday falls like in a weird part of the calendar year. So I was like a baby when I started, I was like 12 when I started high school. So I was 16 in my senior year or 15 going on 16 in my senior year. And like my parents obviously didn't want me working any, anywhere. So I was like, well, I I gotta do something because I would like to go places and do things and, Mm -hmm. you know, have cash. And I didn't want to ask my parents. So I started baking cupcakes and I called them Fudgy Friday. So every Friday I would bring in something because my nickname was Fudge <laughs> at the time because my last name is Fudge and it rhymes oh, yeah. with cute and I'm brown and it makes sense. <laughs> um, so people would, you know, I'd bring in like 30 cupcakes and I'd sell them off for $2 a piece and then I'd have like cash for the weekend mm-hmm. and it was great. And I did that until the school shut me down. I was going to ask about that. Pop- yeah. mm-hmm. Yep. Anti-solicitation makes sense. I respected it. So I stopped. Um, and then when I got to college, I was pretty sure I wanted to be a doctor. Mm. 
So I was pre-med when I began. And uh, like three weeks in a bio, I was like, I don't think this is for me. Maybe hospitality. But at the time, SU was like ending their hospitality program or preparing to re-roll it back out. I don't know what was happening, but that wasn't an option for me. And I was like, I'd become like a dorm mom. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I'm like the baby of the group, but like I was baking everybody birthday cakes, but like baking them in mugs in the microwave and like just, just being like the most ridiculous, but it was, it was a lot of fun, you know, like being able to take care of everybody in that way. And then finally I got this thing. It's like one of those baby cakes, cupcake makers. Mm-hmm. And the one that I had was just like a deep dish. It was just like open. So I was making like brownies and things like that in it. Against university policy, uh, we should not have had this <laughs> Once again, issues. making your own rules. Yeah, so I was doing all that for a while, and then that's when it kind of hit me, like at around that same moment, like literally the day that I checked my my account balance, I was like, oh, six dollars. Oh, oh, okay, uh, that's fun. I decided like I need to do something, and I need to do something quickly, and I knew nothing was going to make me money as fast as like baking. So that same night I made bacon chocolate rice crispy treats with like salted caramel and a white chocolate drizzle and so like put them I made a Facebook group like I made a post and then I was like I'm going to make a group and at first it was just like cupcakes by Courtney and mm-hmm. people were like but these aren't cupcakes and I was like you know you're right so I went back to the drawing board but like I ended up selling out that night <laughs> you're just like friends of friends who like kind of knew me from my baking my old roommate and I Julia we used to sing together we hang out at Funkin' Waffles all the time. And mm-hmm. so those people were like, oh, I'll buy some. Um, so I ended up selling out that night. It was crazy. I and mean, then kind of ever since then, I've just been kind of like expanding the business, but through the structure of the IDS classes. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy when I think about it, because it wasn't even like something that I felt like I would continue doing up until like the end of that semester. Like that was spring semester freshman year. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, mm, I don't really know. Baking is, it's, gosh, it's so niche. And I don't know if I have the energy. So I was, I was in the IDS course. And I was sitting there the entire time trying to come up with any business that was not Thunder Cakes to try to make it, make it all make sense. I was like, ah, oh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think this is it. And I think it was, it was Marcy who said, like, why not do what you're already doing? And I was like, no, no, no. Can I ask you a question no. about that? Yeah, sure. A lot of my clients have a have like this zone of genius, like just where they're super magical and it feels like breathing to them. It's just like mm-hmm. they just wake up and do this amazing thing. And because it's so easy for them, they they kind of like search hard to find something else. Like they it's almost like they try to make it harder than it needs to be. Is that yeah. what it was like for you? Like this is just too easy. I can't make money doing this cuz it's so goddamn easy. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I have a tendency to like to complicate the things in my life. <laughs> um, so I, you know, was, was overthinking it. I wanted to roll out some sort of like alarm clock floor mat that you put on the floor and it won't stop going off until you put your feet on it. Like, I remember I, John telling me about this idea you had. Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. yes. I was like, oh, that would be so cool. But I don't know anything about tech. And I was like, I don't even really like floor mats. I like waking up and stepping on a cold floor. So I just knew that that wasn't the idea for me. Um, But I do feel like, yeah, I was, I think one, it's very easy to be, when you work in the creative space and people are so quick to dismiss what you do creatively because of how instinctive it is, like people don't think of creativity as a skill. And I feel like I had to reframe my relationship with what my talents are and talents can be skills also because you still have to work at them. And that was like, I think in total, that was like the lesson that I had to learn because I was like, wow, like what I do is valid. So when you reframed it, because I think this is vital for women to hear that creativity is something special. Creativity can be cultivated. Creativity is a skill. What did you reframe for yourself? What do you think, like, what did you shift your philosophy to? Yeah. So I think the first thing that I had to recognize is like, (sighs) baking has always kind of been othered as, as uh, I think anything within like the culinary arts, and the culinary arts are very like, male dominated huh. space, right? When we think about it domestically and the influence that women have had culinarily, it large and beyond trumps of, you know, male dominance in the restaurant space. But I think that I had to work through my own issue of being a woman doing a thing that is a historically female mm-hmm. practice. 
so I was struggling against that kind of being in these spaces that, you know, there, I, all the entrepreneurship classes I took were mostly in like the tech or, or business services or something along those lines. So I, one, had to, had to fight through the preconceived notions that I had yeah. about what I was doing in comparison to, but then also when I was looking at it as something that was like for me and by me, um, about the ways that I get to impact people's lives through the work that I do creatively. So yeah, sure. I do it in my house. It's a very like, you know, hands on, there's a lot of love that's going into it, but it affects people. Mm -hmm. And I had to really kind of look at it that way. Like it wasn't just about my feelings about what I do, but I get to be part of so many other people's incredibly special moments. And I think that was like the blessing in it for me that helped it click where I was like, okay, cool. Like I don't have to be ashamed of this. I can walk into rooms with, you know, all of these people, you know, a majority of the time I'm, I'm the only person who looks like me in, in the spaces that I'm in and still feel like what I do stacks up. Yeah. You know, when women introduce themselves and what they do, they'll often say something that kind of shuts the conversation down. They'll say like, oh, I'm a baker or I'm a caterer or I'm a coach. And what I teach my clients and friends to do is to kind of turn it around and say like, I help, I help make people's birthdays magical. You know, I help, mm -hmm. I help women bring their ideas into the world. So if we can like turn our focus onto the service and, and how other people receive it, I think that for women, especially it helps boost us up about like the impact that we actually have. It's not just about what I'm doing. It's about how I can work with you to help you explode. Right. Exactly. And that's exactly. what I think and you're I think, saying. Like you really exactly. saw, like it really is collaborative. You really could see how other people received your services mm -hmm. and how yeah. it made their lives better. Yeah. And it was, it was a huge shift for me. I think that really didn't happen for me until like senior year. I mean, I'd been running the business for three years, had been through God knows how many obstacles, you know, the Syracuse had tried to shut me down twice which is funny now when I, you know, when you look back on it, it's all very hilarious at the time. I think I was petrified, but then also having the support within, within like the, the structure of Syracuse also helped me feel like I wasn't fighting that fight alone, mm -hmm. which was also really, really important for me because, you know, there were times when I'd get really discouraged and it was never so much about like the business itself. It's about where my business existed in like the ecosystem mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship. And like, I had to really push to get myself out of a space that like every time I opened my mouth to talk about my business, I felt like I was invalidating what I was doing. And I knew, and I knew that. And so it like really took like a, a lot of active pushing um, in order to get out of it. And then, you know, by the time I started the master's program, I felt like I had enough understanding of one myself. Cause also like I was, I was 16 a when kid. I started it. You were so I had to like learn a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, by the time I started, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm, yeah, I'm, I've got this down now. And like, now I feel the freedom to do other things and explore other parts of my creativity, which is kind of what led me to the spread. Yeah, let's talk about the spread. So I want to talk about Courtney's current gig that she has. She runs this whole side business and she's got a full-time job in corporate sales, but she really makes this magic happen in her business. So tell, tell us all about the spread and how you transitioned from Thunder Cakes to the spread. Yeah, so I actually fake quit under cakes when I was <laughs> the master's program, you know, I kind of hit this point where I felt like my creativity had been like stifled by my menu mm -hmm. and offering people, you know, a, what, what I felt like it was a pretty restrictive list of, of the things that I was capable of wasn't reflective of like what I wanted to be doing in the culinary world. And I, I'd, I'd known for a very long time that like cooking was my first love baking just happened to be what I was able to monetize. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was really passionate about it too. And like, I've always loved it. But I, when I looked at like my career arc, baking was like 10% mm -hmm. and cooking was everything else. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to give myself the space to get back to that. So upon, you know, completing the, the master's at SU, I was like, you know what I want to do next? Culinary school. Who needs free time. And um, I was, I was just so certain that that was like what I wanted to do. So I took my first two years in or out of school. I worked in a number of jobs. Uh, the first one was at like a distributor doing sales for them for like a very obscure French fruit puree, beautiful product to this day. It's the only product I use when I need fresh fruit puree, but also very hard to sell. And I realized, Oh, maybe, ooh, maybe sales is not my thing. Um, and I kind of had to like think about that. So then I went to go work at HelloFresh. I did brand partnerships for them for a year and a half. 
best job ever. I loved it so much because I was quite literally sitting at the intersection of like being on the procurement team. So I was dealing with ops, being on the, like the, being the marketing function. So I got to like use my creativity. And then at the same time, every decision that I made influenced the culinary team. And I was having to work with them on every single project. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be a corporate chef. I have to be a corporate, what do I need to do? So um, I signed up for culinary school. It was at the same time that I was leaving HelloFresh to go work in like corporate catering and, and see how I felt about that side of the food space. So all of that was kind of happening at the same time after like leaving Thunder Cakes. And it hit me at around maybe like early 2018 that I just wanted to like host parties and have people over. So the spread kind of really informally got started then. I was doing like New Year's parties. I was having people over. My my boyfriend at that time, like whenever he had like a birthday or something, I would do like a whole theme and there would be menus and I'd get really into it. I'd spend like a whole month planning and then we'd have about like 20 people over and it was fun, but I found that I was spending so much time in the kitchen and less so hosting. I wanted to find that balance. So eventually... Um, I said, okay, well, once I start culinary school, like I'm going to start doing this for real, for real. And uh, that was my goal. So the spread was kind of operating under like thunder. It was like thunder cooks for a while. Yeah. And I wanted it to be just like, all right, I want to get into menu development and like R and D and maybe one day have a career in like culinary consulting. How do I start building out a portfolio? So the spread formally started like under six months ago. And it just began as like me throwing like these themed parties. So my first one was poultry, swine, and wine. It was like my ode to Midsummer Night Eve. And we, it's like dead of winter. It was mm. so cold outside. And I was like grilling ribs and smoking chickens and, and making these fun summery cocktails because I wanted to kind of have that escape. I, you know, did all the floral arrangements and everything. And it was kind of like a trial, but the spread wasn't really the spread yet. It was just kind of me still. So. That one went over like so exceptionally well. It was like 20 of my closest friends and, you know, just like having them around, getting feedback from them, asking them questions, being able to host because I, I have a majority of them here in, in my space. I mean, my apartment's pretty large. So I could fit like 40 people in here seated. Wow. It's crazy. It's a lot. It's a lot of room. I'm so blessed. And, you know, being able to like have everybody here and kind of feel that energy. I was like, I have to do this. So I told my boyfriend, I was like, something has to happen. I have to make this happen. Let me, like, if I come up with a name, then it's real. And we were on the phone for like 30 minutes. And I was like, what about the spread? Like, that's some Southern, you know, like mm -hmm. the spread is an inherently Southern thing to call dinner, um, you know, outside of supper. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Or those other things. Yeah. And I was like, I think like that's so me. And if I just like drop a letter, then it'll be perfect. So it's the spread S P R E D. Um, and I'm just like, it's been a lot of fun. Like it really took off very quickly. Um, so I had the first dinner party and then as I was kind of doing like the recap with people on my Instagram and sharing pictures of the place and everything, I let people know just kind of like on a whim. I was like, this is something that I'd be willing to like host for others. And I got two inquiries like that same day. And I was like, Oh, okay. Things are happening. I um, mean, it all just really happened so fast, but then I planned a 28th birthday party for a good friend who wanted to do something kind of like sultry and, and private and, you know, just really very like adult. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So I curated the entire menu for her, designed everything, you know, designed the, the menus and, you know, cause I, I play a little bit in like InDesign. So that's something that I also enjoy. And we just like put the whole thing together. We threw it. I used that as my case study moving forward in order to show other people like, oh, this is something that I can really do. Because I wasn't sure that I had the capacity for it when it was for someone else. So she and I were both like very, I was flexible with her on price for that exact reason, mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that, you know, I needed proof of concept. And mm -hmm. yeah, so ever since that one, you know, I now host one personally per month with a theme that's entirely curated by me. So I had one in the end of April called Herb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it was really cute. It was like 13 dishes in total, and each of them had a different herb in it. How do you um, get invited to these? I want to be, oh my goodness, this sounds like an amazing experience. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, so actually, it's like, it's public. If you live in Jersey City or like in the, in the New York City area, like there will be tickets. Like I, they're, they're ticketed for the ones that are thrown for me and mm -hmm. for other people. I host the tickets on my website just for like tracking and management, but they're the ones who are doing all of the promoting. So people can hire you. A lot more fun. 
People mm-hmm. can hire you too to curate and create a beautiful event for them too. Yeah, yeah. And so we can either, and I think, you know, the challenge for what I'm realizing for like millennials specifically yeah. and even more specifically here in New York, it's just so doggone expensive. Like, you know, if you want to have 30 of your best people go out to brunch with you, if you're doing like a pre five menu, it's $60 and some change per person. And that's for usually a watered down mimosa that are bottomless. <laughs> And, you know, a, a, a tidbit of a food that may or may not be hot by the time you actually get the plate to you. And I think that, you know, when I was looking at that landscape, I'm like, I'm charging like 30 to $40 per person for these things. It's happening in my space. It's, it's very like warm. It's welcoming. You've got somebody who's specifically paying attention to your needs. Um, I just felt like there was a much more intimate experience that people would be willing to you know, come out to Jersey City for. Mm -hmm. And then people usually don't have enough space to host 20 people in their apartment seated. Um, You know, that's one of the biggest challenges that I think like I'm kind of solving right now is like, you don't have to worry about any of the things. You kind of tell me what you're looking for as far as decor. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to expand my portfolio of of decor. So I don't mind, you know, purchasing those things. I build Mm -hmm. that into the price point. Mm -hmm. And then literally all they have to do is just, you know, if you want 20 people, tell them to buy their ticket. Um, no one's ever had to place like a deposit or anything like that. Like it really does kind of outsource the dining experience and you treat it just like a restaurant. You come in, you sit down, you get your drinks. Cocktails are unlimited. I think that's also very fun because my drinks are strong. And, um, but like it's in a, it's in a safe space, you know, and then there's a room here in the front for people to dance. Um, back in the back is like where everybody is kind of sitting and, and they're eating their food. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. People will ask me questions. They'll come over and they'll be like, well, you know, what are, what are you making? Um, and there's only a little bit of cooking that's being done at the time that people arrive. It's like mm-hmm. maybe the vegetables because mm-hmm. I want those to be hot. But yeah, it's like, it's a really fun and interactive experience. And, you know, I curate the playlists and, you know, again, curating the menu, curating the cocktails, working with the client to find out like what their interests are, any allergies, all of mm-hmm. those things. And then, you know, that's worked out really well because now it's got like a lot of word of mouth and and referral clients for the future. Do you think, well, I'm going to stop here because there's so many things I want to point out. The first thing I keep hearing you say is that you, you keep going back to the thing that like sparks in you, your original passion, which was cooking and like love, right? Like that Mm -hmm. is the thing that lights you up. And I think that for a lot of women, and maybe this is, maybe you can tell me, do you think millennial women are a little bit differently than women in their forties? Like me, we got, we have gotten to the point, my age women, where we've tamped everything down. We're just like, like going on autopilot. Do you, do you think that you are different from a lot of your friends where you are tapping into your inspiration and like the thing deep inside of you? I think it's interesting because I think a, a lot of the courage that I've had to pursue this has kind of come from my friends all being in the same space with me okay. right now. I'm also the baby of all my friends. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> all my friends are like, yeah, they're all like, you know, maybe four or five years older than me and a, and a lot of those spaces. So they're like in their late 20s and very early 30s. Mm-hmm. And we're all just kind of like pouring inspiration into mm-hmm. each other about the types of things that we should be doing. For example, like my my esthetician, who is absolutely incredible, she's actually out of Chicago, but she does like all of my skincare online and she's just, she's the bee's knees. She and I have been talking for like the last week about doing a collaboration of like a a skin and dinner party combo where she's doing like consults and, and facials and and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that like that is, those are thankfully the people that I'm surrounded by right now. But like, I talked to my mom who's 15. How old is mom? She's like 57. Okay. Can't tell though. And she is, I think she's, she's always been a lot more linear when it comes to like, she's always, she's been like very directional Mm -hmm. and very like, here are the things that need to get done. Mm -hmm. And I think she has kind of put herself like on the back burner. So the conversations that we have about, you know, getting back out there and and finding her hobbies and like what makes her happy. Like my mom is the most phenomenal interior designer that Mm -hmm. I've ever seen. I think that's something that she should be doing. But in addition to that, you know, she's also like head of business development for a trucking insurance company, which is cool and beautiful. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's allowed her to do so much. But I also think that she has prioritized needs over the want to get back to the things that make her happy. 
So my goal is to, to get her to a space where she feels like that's something that she can do because I've seen what happens when she's in that spot, but she yeah. pours that into me. And then my friends and I, we all kind of pour that into each other. So I do think right now there are kind of like these shifts happening where we're culturally, and I think, you know, even like on Twitter, there are like communities that get created. Like it really is about like the communities that you curate for yourself. Totally. And I so think like right women, now, all my people are. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You were going to say you think a lot of women. Oh yeah. I just think like, you know, the way that, uh, the way that, you know, we as millennials have kind of used social media has been to create community. Like it's less so to absorb content than it is mm-hmm. to feel a sense of belonging. Mm-hmm. And so the way that we tap into various spaces is like, it seems a little bit more purpose driven now. So it's like, I want to follow somebody who does what I do. I want to see what their struggles look like, because I feel like there's a lot more transparency in those communities, as opposed to, you know, just kind of existing in the Twitter sphere or, you know, existing in a space of influencers. I think influencer is always a great way to, to kind of look at it because there are a lot of micro influencers. And that really helped me come out of my shell as I'm looking at what I want to be doing with the spread. And you know, keeping thunder cakes because I still have it. I, I kind of never left. I'm still on it. And then, you know, juggling that with work, I don't think that I'd feel as empowered as I do now if I didn't kind of informally curate who those people are who are like pouring that energy out into oh, my space. I love that answer. And I think it's a vital answer because what you have done is, I love that there's not too much analysis paralysis for you. You're just like, you take an idea and you run with it and then you assess, right? Like you get feedback and you assess and then you run with another idea. Like everything's just an iteration for you. And you're just like, you know what? There's no one right way to do this. And you are living proof of that. And what I am trying to get women to understand is that there is no one right way. Like you can figure it out as you go along. And the longer that you consume information, you take another course and you get another certification and go get another master's degree. Like that's not what moves you forward. That's not what's getting people into your kitchen. Like they don't care yeah. whether you have a culinary degree. They care what experience they have when they come into your home and they consume your food and they, they get this experience. Mm-hmm. So I think you're such a beautiful example of how analysis paralysis, if you could just let go of that, how like mm-hmm. everything can explode for you. Yeah. You're, I think yeah, you're a example of that. Oh, thank you. I'm like, I've, I've, I'm a really huge fan of just like, what do I have to lose? My answer to every question is yes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who's asking. doesn't matter what the result is. Like I literally hop on, hop on everything. And I'm, but I think it's equally important then to be candid with people about where you are in, in your process. Like if I'm, I'm like, for example, with the first girl who reached out for me to do her private dinner party, you know, I kind of just said that one day on a whim and like an Instagram story. And, and for her to be so responsive to that told me, there was something but then the onus was on me to be responsible to her and explain like I haven't done this before we're (laughs) figuring this out together but like I'm going to make this the easiest experience for you possible and I think you know personally like I I dealt with a little bit of like imposter syndrome like what if I'm not who I think I am Mm -hmm. and I had to reframe that and be like I am exactly who I think I am but y'all got to give me some grace Y'all got to give me some room to grow so that I can become who I'm supposed to be. And I think now that like I'm prioritizing that in like my hierarchy of relationship needs with people, Mm -hmm. it's really changing the, the, the sorts of things that are manifesting in my life and what I'm able to give to other people too, because now it's not that I'm promising perfection. It's that I'm, I'm giving you willingness. And that I think makes all the difference. I don't think anybody expects perfection. You know, I I really think a lot of my clients will get stuck on, like they can't launch their business or they can't launch this offer that they have because they don't have it perfect yet. And I'm like, it's never going to be perfect. Like you could plan it all out and then life will get lifey and shit's going to hit the fan and you have to figure it out. Like that's, that's where you get your chops. That's where you gain your confidence, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Like there is literally, um, was it I think I'm pretty sure it was John who said this um, (laughs) that the difference between entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs is execution and that has like really stuck with me and like everything that I've done as much as I love thunder cakes and it was cute conceptually nothing was ever going to happen unless I got in the kitchen and I went in there and I baked my ass off and then I sold it to somebody the spread was never going I you know regardless of the circumstances that I'd been in previously I need I did need the kind of the perfect storm of of circumstances like you know right now like having a job where 
you know, I'm like, I'm working in sales. So it's, I'm, a, I'm a little bit more flexible than I might be if I was doing some other sort of role, mm-hmm. but also having, you know, the certain type of space. I really knew that those are the things that I needed. I've been actively taking steps towards getting those things. But if I didn't have them, I think I still would have tried to make some iteration of that mm-hmm. happen. And I think that that was like the big thing. I was in a place where I was just so frustrated not doing this that I couldn't imagine not doing it any longer. That's the moment where everybody takes a leap when they can't stand where they are now. Like they can't, they can't take it one more minute. They're so sick of their own bullshit that they are willing. I was working with another client today and she, I said, what made you take the leap? And she said, having it, the importance of having the thing was so much bigger than the, the risk of not having it. Like it was, it was so much more worth it to take the risk than to just know I was never going to do it. And yeah. I love that you embody this because like you're exactly, like you're doing it and you're growing it. And here's the other thing I hear you not doing. Oh, what's it going to be in five years? What's it going to be in 10 years? How, like you're not overly worried about what's next. You're kind of letting mm-hmm. it unfold organically. And I, yeah. I think that that gives you so much freedom. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I think, you know, and control is like, oh, control is my thing. You know, I, I crave it. Um, but it hasn't helped me ever. So, (laughs) you know, I'm, I'm kind of like learning to like let things go. I think part of, part of what was important to me about walking away from center cakes than I did is like, I felt like in order for anything to happen with it, it was something I needed to be on all the time. And I was, Mm -hmm. I was, emotionally exhausted Mm -hmm. by the time I finished I was just I was so checked out I could have cared less and like I still tried to put as much love into it as possible but there just wasn't as much love coming out of me naturally for that thing that I was starting to see it affected in like the way my cakes would rise and you know all these other things Mm -hmm. and I'm like I you know y'all deserve better from me than this and I deserve better from me than this and I'd rather walk away from this thing then have it be something I get to the point that I hate. I, at one point, I was just unhappy. Mm-hmm. I could deal with unhappiness, but I knew if I hated it, I could never go back. Yeah. And, you know, with the spread, I'm trying not to put that pressure on myself right now to like have it all mapped out. I'm grateful to have, you know, a whole other career um, mm-hmm. that I can, you know, kind of keep cultivating because I still, I still enjoy the balance of both. Um, I think eventually, like in the next couple of years, I'd love to be doing something like this spread full time or be a corporate chef and then also have these dinner parties. But I love having the interaction and the structure of, you know, going into somebody else's workplace and, you know, interacting with them and, and being part of that culture and then getting to come home and like curate something totally different. Mm-hmm. It like, it like keeps your brain really fresh. Yeah. Well, I cannot thank you enough for giving us all of this energy that you gave us today and the perspectives because you're, I love your perspective, like get in there and just start, get in there and do and see what happens. Like I I wish more women could, could take that leap. And I want to show them that there are people out there to inspire us to do it. So thank you. So I want to know how can people follow you and enjoy like, like taking in your meals with their eyes and, or working with you? Like, how can we get in touch with you? Yeah, sure thing. So right now, the Spreads website is hosted on the Thunder Cakes website. So it's www.thundercakes.com slash the spread, S-C-R-E-D. Okay. Okay. And then also it's the T-H-E dot, as in like period, spread on Instagram as okay. well. Literally just kind of started our page up, but I'll be doing a lot more like photo shoots and, and pictures of food and, and like, you know, videos from the parties, which I think is, you know, just a lot of fun as far as like booking I can be reached at Courtney at Thundercakes.com or, you know, my, my personal email as well, both of which I'm totally like, I can, I'm able to travel within the tri-state area. And then in addition to that, hosting parties here at my home in Jersey City. And as you know, I've got, I've got the space. It's unbelievable that you have that space and that, in that, it's in that area. Yeah. Honestly, it's really crazy. <laughs> like I got, I got so lucky and this was also how I knew I was like, there'll never be a more perfect storm than the storm I'm in right now. Yeah. Like, there will never wait, just right? like, like, take action, don't wait. Yeah. yeah. It only gets harder. It only gets harder. Yeah. If you oh, I'm yeah. so grateful to you. Thank you so much for giving me your time today and your, and your yes, energy. Of Thank you, Courtney. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. 
If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.